Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode. So this time around I'm going to be talking about something personal, still aligned with the World Health Organization Global Goals in terms of decent work and economic growth as well as good health and well-being. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, possibly also employed or self-employed, there are mental health issues that we tend to suppress, uh, not take, um, not acknowledge them. And for myself, I had to acknowledge a few things being a very strong person, being the pillar that everyone leans on, being the leader, which I love and I really do love it. And it's my purpose as well, leadership. And there were some things that just kept holding me back. Um, And of course, I've done all the things, I've done all the work, I've done inner child shamanic journeys, I've done womb healing, I've done generational um, healing Reiki, EFT, energy work, breath work, yoga, gee, fuck's sake, I've done it all. And one of the things that I started putting together was this triangle that we go through in a process where it revolves around first thing being resistance, which is linked to fear and based in rationality. Then there's trauma and then there's emotional anxiety which I want to share with you today that I shared with my email list. Um, I can feel the my heart um, fluttering in my throat because uh, it's really, it, it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. So I'm going to be reading the five emails that I sent to my list. It's um, It's quite personal, so we're going to get straight into it and basically give you the reasons why my business is still running and how action saved my life. Here we go. The year I lost it all, 2020, the year after having built my business for 13 years, came to a screaming halt. All my hard work turned into stone. I went from successful to a very, very dark place. And I wasn't sure I would be coming back from that. Around me, I watched as my business peers were propelling forward successfully, financially, spiritually, emotionally. Whereas one, I was being slapped with an astronomically high tax bill. Two, I had deteriorating health, my thyroid would not stop fluttering, and I was overweight. Three, my teenagers went into their cave and, damn, it all started with drugs, alcohol, police, and relationships. And four, the most important man in my life, my dad, passed away 8th of January, 2021, whilst I was at the airport flying to see him. Now, I'm not going to lie, my thoughts were no longer happy and positive. They were how I could end my life to claim insurance monies, to pay back my tax and ensure my kids were taken care of financially. What would you do? How would you come back from that very, very dark place? Therapy? Drugs? Alcohol? inner child work, exercise, healthy nutrition and meditation, speak to a friend or family, logical things that we are told to do, which I totally get. Really, I do. I did them. However, for me, those are all tools and techniques, coping mechanisms. I didn't want to cope. I wanted to live and succeed. For heaven's sake, (laughs) I am Sashka, a survivor who can see through bullshit, who takes the bull by the horns and dominates. All that stuff are good to have and know, but all these coping mechanisms, they weren't going to get me out of my rabbit hole. 
So how did I get out from a space that was very, very close to ending my life for good? Because I saw the sum of worth, my worth, equal to that of the sum of debt I owned. Why would you choose to want to live? I asked myself this question. Why would you choose to want to live? For me, I thought of all the reasons that are usual answers to want to live. My kids, family, friends, my purpose, my business. These would be valid reasons, right? But it all felt mm, empty. It wasn't valid enough. They weren't reasons to want to keep me alive. I just did not want to live anymore. I was tired of everything piling up on me day in and day out. The pressures of money, of being a good mom, fulfilling my purpose, shedding weight, being healthy, achieving my successes, spiritual healing. I was tired. And yet... I pulled out all the coping mechanisms I taught myself up to date. Affirmations, meditation, nature walks, therapy, anchoring, drinking a lot of red wine, water, weightlifting, exercising my mental mind, talking to my best friend, journaling, reading self-help books, self-advocating, minimizing social media, shamanic journeys, breath work, tapping, massages, Reiki, and yet none of it helped. I still opted for wanting to die. I felt that my life wasn't worth anything. I told myself that I had done what I had come here to do and it was time to leave. And I had dreams of how I could enact my suicide without tormenting my children to prepare them for my departure. I questioned it all. Self-help, personal development, my purpose, vision, and why. All that I'd done and achieved. What was the actual point of it all. I have all the knowledge, all of it. Why was this all not making sense? How could I be stuck in this rabbit hole? Why me? At the same time, I was riddled with guilt and shame. How could I be having these horrible thoughts and planning how to make it happen? What was happening to me? Why was it happening to me? And how could I possibly come back from this horrible space whole and not broken? And you know what came to mind every single freaking damn time? These two quotes that have been with me since childhood. Since freaking childhood, one, you are never pushed past your limit. And two, if you cannot be trusted with a smaller amount, how can you be trusted with a bigger amount? I mean, you would think that going through suicide thoughts would imply that I'd push past my limit. I mean, I've had enough. Finito. And yet, that soft, tiny voice kept whispering to me, you can go further and you can be trusted with more. Just because I heard that soft whisper didn't deter me from my suicide plans. I had been sucked into that rabbit hole and I was beginning to make it home. I was ready to take my life again because, yes, I attempted suicide at 12 years old already. Why not again? Man, this 2020 took me for a spin. I'm not going to lie. Suicidal thoughts is a scary freaking wake-up call. At least it was for me. And in every dark rabbit hole, there will always be light. It's universal law. Always two opposites and in the middle, a cause. And my cause was saying yes to emotional anxiety without consciously knowing what it was. Emotional anxiety started with me at a very young age, and the vessels that allowed the emotional anxiety to seep in were within my empathy, being an innovator, a visionary, a creator, a game changer, a rule breaker, auditory receptive, problem solver, my love language of acts of service, my inner child's archetype being a caretaker, the life of the party, the rescue and protector, the over and underachiever. I taught myself to feel others' emotions and put mine last, if at all. Basically, the opposite of my love language, which are acts of service, of giving. 
I picked up on the language, energy, and conversations of everyone around me through my primary auditory reception and stored it in my subconscious as my own and created the beliefs that these emotions were my identity. (sighs) Okay, just let's digest what I just said there. I'm going to read it again. I taught myself to feel others' emotions and put mine last, if at all. Basically, the opposite of my love language, which is giving. I wasn't receiving. I picked up on the language, energy, and conversations of everyone around me through my primary auditory reception and stored it in my subconscious as my own and created the beliefs, the thoughts, the stories that these emotions were my identity. What is your primary receptive state and your love language? This made it really difficult for me to manifest what I wanted because to manifest, you need to feel. And I had cut myself off from feeling anything for myself, but only for others. Here's an example. I would hear the men in my family talk down to the woman in my family, telling them that they were stupid and that they didn't know any better. Although this wasn't said to me, being a woman and empathetic and my auditory reception uh, receptive, I took these words on through my auditory reception as my own and felt the emotions as if they were mine and created beliefs around my identity that as a woman, I am not worth much. Emotional anxiety is the elusive soft whisper that disconnects and uncouples you between yourself, your inner child and your higher self. Basically your past, your present and your future. It sets all three up against one another, leaving you depleted, and as in my case, wanting to quieten the voices in my mind by ending my life. Have you heard of the saying, you create your reality? Well, (laughs) I've heard and repeated this line a gazillion times, always thinking it applied to someone else because my reality was just dandy. But as an adult, I can now see that I created the reality that I have right now the high tax bill by trusting my tax consultant and and accountant and not being in control of my money, the disruption of my teenagers and the stories attached around them, the business decline, my poor health and heavy weight, all me. I created that through emotional anxiety. I didn't know any better as a child and my parents had no freaking clue what all the psychology stuff was, nor were they interested. And there is no blame either. It's taking ownership that me being in this bloody rabbit hole is because I put myself there, because I chose to follow emotional anxiety, and I wasn't aware of it. If this resonates at all with you, I'm going to move on to the next level. So how do you stop yourself from committing suicide? How did I stop myself from committing suicide? And I just want to add a disclaimer. I am not in any way a clinical therapist. I don't want to be. I'm sharing with you today what I have been going through in the hopes that maybe it'll help you or perhaps you know of someone that you know of going through something similar where you can better understand or help them acknowledge or see something as a starting point The easiest way for me to make sense of something is to always see the big picture as a visionary does. And then I need to chunk things down to make sense of it all so that it doesn't all overwhelm me, which is what I did with my suicide thoughts. So the first step I had to take was speak about my dark thoughts out loud. In my case, it was to my trusted and best friend which was really difficult for me because being who I am and was, there was through the emotional anxiety and the empathy, a trust issue that I just relied on myself always. And my acts of service, my love language of giving, I gave to everyone, but never opened the portal to receive. 
And when you speak things out loud, you open the wound and you're able to heal it because shame wants to hide it. It took a lot of courage on my part as I am always the pillar that everyone leans on and not the other way around. I had to ask for help. And once I did and I started to speak, mm, we hear this and we read this all the time, but damn, that load really starts to feel lighter especially if the person that you're speaking to is willing to listen and lighten the burden. And I was able to see the pattern of emotional anxiety that had been with me my whole life and how it was destroying me. Because the more you speak of it, the, the more you unclutter the brain and the mind. I then had to understand emotional anxiety and how it was controlling me and gently take the reins back so that I could take back control over my life. So in understanding emotional anxiety, I'm going to break it down with the analogy of a seed. Now we're all given seeds to plant and what you plant grows. If you plant the seed of a rose, a rose will grow. If you plant the seed of a pansy, a pansy will grow. If you plant weeds, weeds will grow. My whole life, I planted pushing away my feelings to not feel them. I understood them, knew of them, but did not feel them because through my life as an empath, which I only came to find out about a decade ago, I had taken on everyone's emotions. I fell deeply into them, so much so that I became those emotions, ignoring my own. And as an innovator, a visionary and creative and a problem solver, I would wallow in these emotions trying to make sense of them more. The more I took others' emotions on, the less I noticed mine and ignored my feelings. And I got sucked into a spiral of emotions. I planted ignoring myself, which was the opposite of what I wanted for myself. My thoughts which are beliefs or stories that were subconsciously planted through my auditory reception became things. And my feelings are what manifested these things in my life that created my reality. I understood this on the surface level, but it was when I was sucked into the rabbit hole at rock bottom that these words suddenly took on weight and meaning. I was ready to hear and see them. And this is really important. When you're ready, the master will arrive. And that master can come in all different forms. You just have to keep your eyes open. And I began to see clearly for the first time how all the 2020 happenings had been a reflection of all my inner feelings and emotions and reality. And it was time to replant seeds to create the life I wanted to live and uproot the weeds that have been occupying my garden of life. These weeds have been my life jacket my whole life. And I want to really reiterate this, that just uprooting and throwing them out won't work. I have to replace them with something new and doing it slowly by letting go of the grip. I want it to be debt free. I needed to plant the seeds of abundance and receiving. I wanted a relationship. I needed to plant more love for myself. I wanted a healthy, lean and strong body. I had to plant the seed of loving myself. And you know what waters the seeds? <laughs> Gratitude. It sounds so simple, right? <laughs> Fucking hard. Because I had to take action. Of all the things that could have saved my life, I never thought that it would be action. I have learned and taught myself a lot over the years, possibly every coping mechanism under the sun, from creating new habits, energy healing, breath work, affirmations, journaling, the list goes on. But never did I link emotional anxiety releasing through action. We underestimate action because we fear it. In this triangle that I explained in the beginning, the resistance is rooted in fear and the fear with rationality. There's a story attached to fear, 
and action, that it's going to be hard, not sexy and costly. There is a price to pay. What's, what makes it like this is that we haven't experienced the tools, the mechanisms, or haven't gotten to know ourselves well enough to release the fear by learning to replace it with something more beneficial and aligned to who we are. And this is where the emotional anxiety had its hook on me. Fear of action, despite all the tools, stopped me from uprooting the weeds and replacing it with planting the seeds that I needed and wanted to create the life I wanted to live. I had a story attached to action, to emotional letting go and creating a reality that I wanted, not what was expected of me. And this fear piled up over time, consumed me. My emotions controlled me and not vice versa. I felt paralyzed to take action of it. If it weren't emotional enough, full of drama and turmoil, the opposite of what I wanted in my life. And the only reason why one chooses suicide is because you're not happy with the life you're living and have created. And to get out, it wasn't just acknowledging the emotional anxiety, but replacing this weed with what I wanted in my life. So let's break it down. To get out of my rabbit hole, I had to review what seeds I had planted consciously and subconsciously that had created my current reality versus what reality I wanted. For example, I wanted more money in my life and business. The weeds that I had planted were old money beliefs, stories such as, I'm not good with money. I let money slip through my fingers. I don't know how to manage money. I spend more than I make. I spend more than I receive. So it didn't matter how many clients I was bringing in. The energy that I was creating around my beliefs was that money just wouldn't stay with me. As soon as it would come in, it would have to leave again. Because this is what I had seen happen over and over again, for example, in my family with money. Dad would gamble and would lose the money as soon as it wanted. Being the empath, I would tap into all the emotions and energy that was expended between my mom and dad and take it on as my own. And I would make these money beliefs as a part of my identity. And anything that would be the opposite to that would create resistance and fear in me, thereby increasing the emotional anxiety by telling myself that I'm not good enough. The more I did this, it's a muscle, it's a habit, and you practice it, the more the emotional anxiety happened, which affected my health, my mental state, my vocation, my relationships and sex life, and the list goes on. Just to note... Beliefs are our stories with attachments. They are enclosed in a little bubble called energy, and energy takes on different forms. Not people, but forms. This means that the energy I had around money, which I mentioned before, the beliefs, also takes on form for other areas in my life, like my relationships, my health, my vocation. That energy manifests itself into all areas because energy takes on form. For example, where my beliefs were, I'm not good with money, that energy, those feelings around that, that form is taken on in a different form within my relationships, where I'm not good with relationships, or I let money slip through my fingers. I let relationships slip through my fingers. And that's the cycle that kept repeating the energy taking on different forms. So my first action step was that I had to control, I had to take control of my emotions to feel what I wanted to manifest and the life I wanted to create to live. This is replacing a weed with a seed that I want in my life. My tax payments almost paid off because I worked on my beliefs around money and planted new seeds, uprooted the weeds and watered with gratitude. My teenagers I'm holding space for their identity discovery. This is not my life. It's theirs. They need to live it. I need to facilitate it. I do not have to be the mom that should be, how everyone says I should be. I need to be the mom that my kids chose me to be. My business is accelerating, not by adding more, but by streamlining it with staff that are action takers, decluttering and only offering three services and moving forward with more meaningful extension of Brand Sashka, Future Forward Hub podcast and events. 
where I hold conversations with two to three people on my podcast and thousands at live events, irrespective of their expertise, gender, race, or religion, on six of the World Health Organization global goals that I'm aligned with, on how we are being the change we want to see in the world. My body and health, I've shared 10K so far, lifting weight, pushing my cerebral brain to become disciplined and play through the hurt. I'm becoming stronger, leaner, sexier, reminding myself that this is a journey, not a destination. And I'm loving myself. And lastly, probably the most important, mm, every day I miss my dad. It's still raw, still early, pretty much tear up all the time when I speak about him, which is normal. These are things that I would normally talk to him about just to make sense of everything and now there is just a void i know it'll heal it's meant to my dad suffered for eight long years he always said to me that he wasn't living a life anymore he was only existing and i understand that now and his lesson to me my seed to plant is to live and not just exist So why am I telling the story, my story, which is quite vulnerable, about my suicide story and emotional anxiety? Well, it certainly wasn't to glorify the world of suicide or emotional anxiety. I really just want to show that you are more than your emotions and the anxiety around emotions, especially if you recognize when you recognize that when you go down a rabbit hole, that the reality that you're living isn't the reality that you want and recognizing that mm, should you be overwhelmed or know of someone who is acknowledging that it's the emotions that are controlling the person. And that is what needs to be changed to create a life that you want to live. It requires you to uproot the weeds Place these seeds with what you want in your life slowly by letting go of the grip and taking action. It's sexy. Yes, it's hard. Maybe costly. But the rewards hmm, is life. And you replace all these seeds with what you want in your life. No one is coming to save you. Only you can do that. Be and become the person you need for yourself. Seriously, I know that you can do it because you haven't pushed past your limits and you can be trusted with more. So, I think it's time I need to tell you that should you be going through something similar, There is light at the end of the tunnel. Another little quote, another little saying, but it's true. And it's time to get your sweet bud off of that slump and step into action. And if this has been helpful for you, by the mercy of God, please let me know. Sign up, subscribe to the email, newsletter, join the community. And once you receive that email, hit reply and let me know how this has helped you. Or even write to me at hello at futureforwardhub.com. I love hearing from you. And of course, if you subscribe to the podcast as well as to the email, it just lets us know at Future Forward Hub that uh, you're out there and that uh, we're not speaking into the void, which is awesome. And obviously everything stays anonymous as well, should you wish that. In the meantime, keep your head up. If you need anything, write to me. I can send you in the right direction. I have a a lot of a, a good network of psychotherapists, clinical therapists, psychologists, coaches, that are able to work with you and assist you for that help. 
Otherwise, grab that nearest friend that you really trust, family, and don't keep it stifled. Unclutter, declutter whatever's going on in your brain and speak about it rather than let shame hide it. And you've got this. Action is what saves your life. Not thinking about it. Action. Love you lots. I see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.